This is a picture, a very popular picture of Einstein. Apparently when he was a celebrity, I think in the 50s, it was very popular to like follow him around with a camera and get pictures of him. And apparently he got tired of the pictures. Matthew, why don't you just move on down because I think this is going to be just a hard day. Why don't you move in front of Natalie? Just, just come on down. I think you're not going to be able to sit there and not talk to Jacob. So, okay. But anyway, he um, just moved three chairs forward. Yeah, there we have it. Okay. Um, and he's, they snapped his picture. He just made this face. This is a fam very famous face okay, uh, for Albert. But basically, general relativity is based on this principle of equivalence, right? Special relativity was based on the notion that light, whenever you observed it, would always be going the speed of light. So this is a very strange thing, right? So even if, if Matthew runs at me at half the speed of light and turns on his flashlight, he sees the light going away from him at the speed of light, but I see it coming toward me at only the speed of light, right? And this leads to all sorts of crazy things. Yeah, yeah, this is weird, right? This leads to crazy things like clocks don't run the same in the, both frames of reference. Um, his mass is going to be a little bit more because he's got kinetic energy, right? E equals mc squared, all this stuff, right? Um, and then general relativity came from this principle of equivalence, right? Um, so special relativity dealt with this things going fast but not accelerating. This deals with accelerations, right? So general relativity, the principle of equivalence, and is that in your note guide? Yeah, there you go, right? There's no experiment that will discern the difference between the effect of gravity and the effect of acceleration. So if you're sitting in this room right now, you feel a downward force. If I drop things, in fact, they accelerate toward the ground at 9.81 meters per second squared, right? Now, if I were to take us and put us in a box out in space and attach us to very smooth rocket motors, ones that we couldn't feel the vibration of, right? Yes? And I were to accelerate us that way at 9.81 meters per second squared, wouldn't we feel thrown down to the floor? Yeah, we could. We would, we would feel that, right? If we were accelerating, we would feel thrown to the floor. If we dropped some object, well, I'd continue accelerating that way, but the object would stop accelerating and appear to accelerate toward the floor, correct? Right? And what Einstein said was that there's no, not only is it similar, it's a similar experience, but there's no experiment, in fact, that you could do, right, to determine the difference between this. Now, this is kind of a radical concept, right? This means, what it really means is that, that inertial mass and the mass that we use in gravity are the same thing. That they're exactly the same thing, right? That the force that I've got here could be mg, a force times 9.81 newtons per kilogram, the gravitational field strength like we did. It's also equal to ma. That's an inertial mass, right? It's equal to the force that I need to exert to accelerate it that way because it's, that's what I'm doing in, in essence, right? This is a weird thing. Your brains are like smoky. Wait till we talk about warping dimensions. This will be, this will be good, right? Okay, so the other way to say it is that gravitational and inertial mass are equivalent. The mass that you use in this formula, F equals ma, that's inertial mass, right? And the, the mass that we used in this formula, weight, is mg. Did you, did you think they were similar? I think you did. There were some of you that did. Yeah, these are the same mass. That's what Einstein said. Now, up until this point, we really hadn't. We just assumed they were the same, right? Okay. So... This is the idea, right? On Earth, we drop the book, it accelerates toward the floor. But in space, if we're accelerating up at 9.8 meters per second squared, we drop the book and the book stops accelerating and, it, and hits the floor, right? Because the floor accelerates into it. And there's no way to tell the difference between those, right? And then, of course, uh, what, if you're, what if somebody cuts the cable and you, you are free falling? Well, things, you know, it's like zero gravity. This is how, in fact, they simulate zero gravity in NASA if they want to see whether a combustion system or a pipe or something like that's going to work in zero gravity. They have these drop towers. In fact, there's a 1.7 second drop tower now at PSU, right? We used to drive, we used to fly out halfway across the country to do experiments at, in Cleveland, almost all the way across the country, right? Um, where they had this big drop tower. They've got like a four and a half second drop tower. You can figure out how far you've got to drop something for that. We didn't get to use that one, but did anybody, did anybody see there was a, I think it was on, uh, they interviewed this woman like within the last 10 years. There was an incident where a bomber flew into the Empire State Building. Did anybody hear this? In World War II, a, a B-29, I'm just going to guess, a big bomber with multiple engines on its wings flew into the Empire State Building. That wasn't an act of terrorism. It was just like, oops, right? And <laughs> the airplane, airplanes are not very strong. Buildings are fairly strong in general. 
right? And it wasn't full of jet fuel, it wasn't like that, right? And basically the airplane just disintegrated on the outside of the building, but the engine blocks were like these solid aluminum things, right? And the engine blocks went all the way through the building, right? So it hit like on the whatever floor. Those engine blocks went through that entire floor and exited the building on the other side, right? They actually went, there was an entry and exit wound on the building, right? Okay. In one of those, one of those uh, engines, as it went across an elevator shaft, cut the cables in the elevator shaft, yeah? There was a woman in the elevator, yeah? And the elevator was cut free and it free fell for like, they don't, they, and they're not sure, like I can't remember, 40 stories or some crazy amount, right? Yeah? Hundreds of feet she fell, right? She did not die, do, do, you, do you know why she didn't die? They don't have a big spring at the bottom of the elevator. Why, why is, if the cable breaks, why don't people die? Does anybody know? Do you know that elevators have brakes on them? Yes, elevators have brakes, right? The, the brakes are, are a very simple device. And in fact, before you could build buildings above, much above four stories, you have to have elevators. And then you can't have people just die when the cable breaks, right? That's not acceptable, right? So, so elevators have this, like there's a, a rail that they ride on. They don't just hang on the cable, they ride on a rail. And then there's a crazy thing like a spring and there's a, a weight like this. And gravity pulls that weight down, right? And then there's like a shoe, a brake shoe or something like that. Here, and then this spring, if, if, if there's no gravity, then the spring is the only force and it engages the brake shoe and it stops the elevator, right? So they, they know, they know that when the elevators, and the other ones work, by the way, on cable tension. If there's ever a lack of tension in the cable and the brakes grab the thing, that's always bad if there's no tension, right? But there was one that was designed like this, right? So gravity kept the brakes not attached, right? But then when there was no gravity, that is you broke the ca cable, this thing would go chunk, and grab on like that, right? This is way more than you need to know about this, okay. Right? So you feel zero gravities, right? So then the other crazy thing is that a gravitational field, an acceleration, a force can actually bend light, right? So this is, this is a very bizarre thing, right? And in fact, um, Einstein's theory of general relativity predicted a twice, Newton's theory predicted a curvature of light, but Einstein's theory predicted about twice the amount of curvature, right? So um, they decided to check this, right? Well, the best thing to do is to look for the nearest massive object, and the nearest massive object is the sun. Now, when gravity bends light, this is called gravitational lensing, right? The, the light takes a path, a curved path, just like an orbital trajectory, right? So it comes in here, and instead of going straight there, it curves around and is seen by the observer, right? Now, we, of course, when we watch the star, we think that the star's position is here because we don't know about that curvature, right? So this star is really there, but when it's near the sun, it bends away from the sun. I'll show you some pictures of this. There's some really cool pictures of the Hubble's taken, not of the sun, but of, um, but of uh, distant galaxies, right? Okay, now, how do you see stars right next to the sun? Is, isn't this seem like a pretty hard thing to do? Yeah, but you can. There's a t there's a certain times when you can see stars right next to the sun. Doesn't happen very often. What what, what has to be true? Doesn't something have to block the sun? What? It's an eclipse. Yeah, we have to have a solar eclipse. These are pretty rare. They happen every you know ten years, five years. In a particular location, you can go thousands of years without having a, a solar eclipse there. So people travel to them, right? They're these little things that cross the globe, right? Little tiny areas, and and we're lucky. The moon happens to just about cover the Earth the sun perfectly in the sky. The moon is smaller but closer. The moon, the sun is larger but farther away, right? And so during an eclipse, you can actually see stars come out. And the sun is this crazy. Has anybody seen a total solar eclipse? There's one coming in the next, I'm pretty sure five years soon, three years, I want to say, and it's going to be easy driving distance from Portland. I think it's even coming in the summer, so we have a you know, chance of seeing it, right? Okay, but stars come out next to the sun. So what they did was they watched, and of course, how do you measure this shift? Do you suppose they just know where the star was when the sun isn't close to it? And then they look at where it is when the sun is close to it? Yeah, there we go. Right, so in 1919, Sir Arthur Eddington measures the deflection of light. They have to travel, I think, across the ocean. They almost miss, it's just this crazy thing. They almost miss seeing it because there's clouds, but they do see it, right? And sure enough, this confirmed um, general relativity. And um, what's, what's interesting is that later on, you know, when Hitler was, this was not one of Hitler's, by the way, most successful programs, but later on when Hitler was taking power in Germany, he tried to discredit um, general relativity, right? 
Why, why was he trying to discredit general relativity and special relativity? 